Hello people, what is going on? Another video, back with Jay. This is his fan reaction to West Ham United 1, Aston Villa 2. Jay is in Africa, uh, enjoying life, loving life, getting some sun. But West Ham weren't cooking yesterday. Jay, how are you doing, man? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Well, uh, as good as you can be. I've traded the tropical paradise of East London for the tropical paradise of Africa. The sad thing is I had to put up with... Uh, watching the game yesterday surrounded by Villa fans, uh, which was not fun. <laughs> I'll tell you that much for free. Um, but otherwise, all good, mate. How are you feeling after on the, on the morning after the night before? Uh, gutted. I'm, I'm just gutted. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit numb to it, really. There's a lot of issues that I I get the like the positivity vibe. Like it's the first game, everyone's got like, like it's a work in progress. I get all that. Don't get me wrong. But on this one, I look at yesterday's game. I see some major issues there where like there was a lot of mistakes from Lopetegui and the team to a point, but we're, but we're going to get into it. Um, first off starting lineup faults. Uh, I think everyone was disappointed not to see at least Aaron Wambasaka in the sides. Um, and I think that ultimately hurt us a lot. Um, mm. I look, I look at it from both perspectives, right. And I look at it from how the game panned out and what was alarming for me was, I think especially with Duran's goal, which again, I'm sure we'll come to, um, was how much space Suchek, uh, sorry, not Suchek, Sufal has to give to his man to not get burned for pace. And that mm -hmm. is so alarming. And it left us, uh, our like the shape of our back four was just wrong time after time because we're having to uh, make allowances for Sufal's lack of pace. And that has ultimately cost us and made us look so shaky defensively. Um so I think that was really, really alarming for me. Um, I was disappointed with the nature of both goals, to be honest. The first goal is an absolute shambles, realistically. Yeah. Like, and, and again, I'm not the kind of person, as I hope that people who've watched me talk over the last few weeks uh, will, will realise, I'm not the kind of person who's going to dig out like Suchek and Sufal just for the sake of it. But I did think both of them were what cost us ultimately. Um, mm. over the course of the game. Suchek give the ball away needlessly, completely not under any kind of pressure, puts it out for a corner and we concede. Antonio's marking for the goal was shambolic. Could the keeper have come and claimed it? I don't know, maybe. Um, certainly, there, Emmy Martinez had no problem coming out and claiming crosses, but Ariola didn't claim that one and we're 1-0 down within four minutes. The, the excitement for the season kind of evaporated within four minutes. Um, we couldn't even have like 45 to enjoy it and think what was going to be. Now, that being said, um, there were some positives from the lineup uh, that I thought. I thought as much as it's not his best position, I thought Kudus had a good game on the left-hand side. Um, I thought he was lively. I thought he had the beating of Matty Cash the whole game. Um, and he was just so, so good on the ball. Um, I thought Max Kilman had a fantastic debut. I, th I thought he was brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. I thought the way that he stepped out, the way that he commanded the defence, I thought the way that he, the interceptions and the blocks from crosses, I thought he was excellent. Um, but other than that, there, there, there wasn't a lot of positives, I didn't think. Um, and we'll get into the reasons. But yeah, from, from my perspective, the two players that played well were Kilman and Kudus, but otherwise it was a pretty disappointing performance. I agree with you on Kudus. Uh, I but I don't want to see him on the left. Like, I just look at him on the left and I think, oh, no, you, you're trying to shoehorn him in there and mm. you're hoping he, that, that he's, he's on it. Do you know what I'm saying? I thought Matty Cash in the first half was dealing with Kudus to a point. I'm going to be honest. Well, when West Ham were attacking, I thought he was handling him uh, pretty pretty well. Second half, obviously, Mo was going up another level. Um, Gilman, I agree with you slightly, but defensively, when a player's running at him, he get he starts backing up too much mm. for me. I need to him, I need to him uh, for him to engage earlier, like and try and make the tackle and not not commit himself so he gets done, but like be a bit more aggressive in that in that regard. Because every time that he backs himself up, he's basically allowing them to have a shot on goal to a point. Mm. And uh, for me, that's not that's not for me. But passing out the back, uh, defensive awareness was pretty good. But then. Mm. Emerson was nowhere to be seen yesterday. Like I'm going to be honest, like amount of space that he left and Kilman had to clear up every single time. 
I think this is the problem, though, and I think a lot of it stems from our midfield. We had a half-baked Guido Rodriguez in there who was just okay. I didn't think he was good. I didn't think he was particularly bad, but I didn't think he offered a lot of protection to the back four. And I think the difficulty in that first half, as you say, um, I don't think we had a good first 30 minutes. I thought we were by far second best. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, I think they were just carving through our midfield and the back four was exposed. And you could see it was a back four that was shaky and it was a bit worried um, for reasons that we just kind of outlined. The fullbacks weren't playing particularly well defensively. I thought Mavropanos was okay. Um, we've been saying for a while that he's a concern. And I thought, whilst I still don't think he's starting quality, I'm happy with him as a squad player and he did okay. Um, but they were so exposed. So in those situations that you're talking about, I agree with you that it would have been great for it to have Kilman or somebody step out and challenge. But because Sufo had to tuck in so much, because we didn't have any cover from the midfield, if Kilman mm. steps out of position, like the back four, the, the actual line just crumbles and they, they pick us apart and they score similar to how they did for Duran's goal. So I get your point and, and I agree with you to an extent, but it's, it's just so difficult, especially in that first 30 minutes where we could have got blown away because positionally we were just all over the shop. So I yeah. agree that first 30 was, was just poor, but we did wake up a little bit after that. And I thought we were actually okay in the second half. Uh, right, penalty, yes or no for you? Yeah, I think it's a pen. I think it's a bit soft and I think it's if, if it was the other way, I would have been frustrated, but he makes contact. Uh, mm. he, both legs get wrap around Suchek's leg. It, the rules of the game, that's a penalty. I, I don't think you can debate it. You could be frustrated. I, I understand Villa fans' frustrations with it, but it's a pen for me. Can't mm. try. Well, what was you thinking at half-time? Because my reaction on at half-time was, I need to see some change here because that weren't, that weren't good enough in the first half. What are you saying? I, I said the same. I, at half-time, was thinking, bring on wan Saka and Fulkrug um, was, was what I wanted. I thought Antonio offered very little. Um mm. The ball was just bouncing off him and it wouldn't stick to him. Falkrug didn't get enough time to make an impact on the game, frustratingly. Um, and we can talk about the reasons. And um, obviously, wan didn't get on the pitch, which, again, ultimately hurt us. But he's probably not really trained with the boys. They've probably gone straight into match day preparation when he's ready to start training. So I imagine he's not had any real time to play with them. But you look at Masraoui for Manchester United, who signed the same day as wan he started for Manchester United and had a brilliant game. And he was mm. absolutely superb. Um, and he slotted in, having never played a game of Premier League football. So for me, wan had to come on at halftime. Um, I thought Antonio should have been nowhere near the pitch the second half. Um, and I thought you I thought you could have taken Suchek off as well. Because I, I, I don't know how many touches he had in the game. But I turned to my brother at one point and was like, I actually don't remember the commentator saying his name. Great, I was watching the game in Portuguese. But yeah. um, but I didn't see the commentator mention his name and I don't know how many touches he actually had, but he offered nothing in the build-up phase, which for me, when Paqueta dropped out of the 10 and dropped deeper, the issue with that was his role in the deep line playmaker, which I've been championing for a long time, you know that. Um, his issue was... He didn't have someone to aim at in the 10. He didn't have that pass to break the lines. So when he's picking yeah. the ball up deep, it is in that man's DNA to try and find an attacking pass. So when he gets it on the half turn, he's got no option there because Suchek wanted to peel onto the fullback to win a header, which is why he got nowhere near the game. Uh, he didn't want to pass it backwards. So he was looking for Bowen because he trusts Bowen. And as we saw from pre-season, he pings the ball at Bowen. Bowen takes a great touch and he scores. So for me, Paqueta was off to a losing start because we didn't have the offering for him, for him to play in the deep line playmaker. So you could have also made an argument to bring Suchek off and bring Somerville on and push Kudus in the middle and play that kind of lineup that we were all wondering whether we could play. Well, I'm not being funny. If you look at how we actually lined up when Suchek played in the 10, we proved that we can play with Paquette deep and not get cut apart. I actually mm. thought we were the better team for a long time in the second half. I thought the result was probably deserved because we didn't do enough to win the game. But I actually thought with Paquetta in the deep, as much as it didn't quite work for him personally, I thought strategically for the team, it actually worked really well. So I would have made those three changes personally. Um, but we also um, what, uh, what did you make of the, the, the treble substitution from Lopetegui? Because for me, it's very, very mixed. I get... I get the Paqueta one. He's on a yellow card. Mm. Um, he literally got away with another yellow card. Mm. I think and it, like, where he was, another another foul, he's off. Yeah. yeah. Rodriguez, 
okay, fair enough. I can accept that one. But the Jared Bowen one really does irritate me because the game's won all as your captain. I can guarantee you Bowen wants to stay on the pitch all the way to the end. And to sub him off, I just thought it was wrong, if I'm being honest. I, 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 do you know, in the moment, I thought the same thing and I was a bit bemused by it. Having had a night to kind of sit on it and think about it, there's obviously a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that we don't know about. He like Lopetegui's probably talking to fitness coaches and sports scientists who are saying you can't play him for 90 minutes because he's at risk of overexertion and all the boring sciencey stuff that we as fans don't really care about. So mm. when West, when you want West Ham United to win a game of football, you want Jared Bowen on the pitch because for the exactly the reasons that you say. So I'm frustrated by it, but there are conversations that will have been happen, been happening behind the scenes. And look at the fact that Watkins got dragged at about about the same time as well, who's played a similar amount of football as Jared Bowen has. But is so, he? Is it more? I, I, it's not the sub that's the problem. It's the actual. For me, it's the way doing it all three subs at the same time because it's a complete restructure of everything. Like that's your playmaker, that's your defensive midfielder, that's your uh, your attacking winger. Like to do it all at the same time, I thought was a bit rash to a point. Like if you'd have done Rodriguez and Paqueta and then left Bowen another five minutes and then let Bowen come off, then I think you can sort of integrate it in. But you know what I'm saying. Maybe, yeah, yeah, it's a valid point, mate. Um, for me, I actually one of the slight positives. I agree with you on that point. Maybe it was a bit rash. He was looking for kind of a differential. Fresh legs were clearly needed because we were starting to look leggy. What I didn't mind and what like at all was when we went behind. <clears throat> excuse me. Lopetegui didn't sit on his hands and he changed the formation and he went, mm. let's throw some more players on. Let's go to a three at the back and let's see what we can make happen. And sure enough, we caused some chaos and Suchek picks the ball up two yards and finds Rosette. Like, it mm. is what it is. Um, so I didn't mind that. I'm not sitting here going, Lopetegui's had an absolute nightmare. I think he's definitely got some questions to answer. And yeah. the reason I cut him a little bit of slack is because I, like there will be conversations that were had behind the scenes that meant the likes of Wan-Bissaka... Uh, the likes of Bowen couldn't play 90 minutes or couldn't play at all. Falkrug still doesn't look like he's fully match fit as well, even though he only got a very limited amount of time to actually get into the game. So as much as it hurts, and I never, ever want to see West Ham lose a game of football. Um, and on a different day, Thomas Suchek should bury that chance in the 97th minute. Like there is mm. absolutely no excuses for that for me. I thought it took a deflection. No, no, he just spoons it into yeah. Rose. Like, like yeah. there, there is no excuse for that man to be on the pitch. He's in that position for that exact opportunity to bully someone and pick the ball up and pick up the scraps and score. And, and he misses it. So on another day, if he buries that and we walk away with 2-2, two, two, which is what you predicted initially, you, yeah. you if you put money on that, you've been robbed of a few quid by a Thomas Suchek sitter in the 97th. So um, on another day, we're sitting here going, 2-2 two, is a great result against Villa. We're not. And it, it's frustrating. But at the same time, I cut Lopetegui a little bit of slack in that respect because of the stuff that we don't know that's happening behind the scenes. I think it's a tough one for me. For me, on a personal one, I look at the lineup and I thought the lineup was wrong from the start. Like, mm. I think when you got um, Tobedo in there and you got Wamba Saka there, one of them should have played. Like, because mm. we held 70 goals last season with three of them uh, for uh, defenders. And we've, we've been conceding goals in pre season and all. And it ain't like, this is not like a rare occurrence. If West Ham have been winning games in pre season, this was a one off. I, could, I would accept it and move on. But on this one, I'm a, I'm a bit suspect. I think the half-time issue is a major problem for me because that first half wasn't right. I think we all knew Antonio was was just not on it. And yeah. to sit on your hands at half-time and say, right, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to see how it goes. When it wasn't good in the first half, that uh, that to me just doesn't feel feel good. Um, yeah. I need to see four Krug in this side. I need to see Wemba Saka in this side. And I'm going to be honest, some of you will come on and he, he, he didn't really get a lot of time, but... I need to see him, like, because I think he's a sort of player that can do some damage on that left. But yeah, yeah, I, 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 mean, I agree, I agree. And just on that point, um, I thought there was signs there that he's going to click into this team. It's going to take time. Yeah. Uh, physically, I think he's got a lot of improving to do. But there were some of his touches and what he was trying to do in the closing stages of that game that I thought, yeah, th this kid will do well at West Ham. But like you say, he didn't get a lot of chance, and he probably should have come on sooner. Mm, yeah. Um, who was your who was your best player yesterday for you? It's close between Kudus and Kilman. Um, I'm going to say Kudus, I think. Um, and like I said, I could have gone either way. Uh, I just thought Kudus was so good to watch. And in times when we needed to get up the pitch, we give it to him and he made something happen. 
Um, mm. And there was no one else on the pitch who was really doing that. Um, I thought Kilman had a really good game, but ultimately we we conceded twice. And if you're mm. a defender, it's hard to say that someone gets man of the match as a defender when you concede twice. So, um, yeah, for me, Kudus, I thought he was excellent. I think he's looked really good all pre-season. Um, and I think he was the differential for us. Um, so, yeah, Kudus for me. Worst player for you? I think Suchek. Um, and it could have been Sufal, it could have been Antonio, um, but I think Suchek for me, he, we had to shuffle the team around just for the fact that Suchek wasn't offering anything in the, the deeper midfield position. He was in the team to score goals or to pick up chances or do whatever. Yes, he won a penalty, um, but ultimately he's there in the 97th minute to bury that chance and he didn't. Uh, he, he probably, I reckon, I'd be surprised if he had more than a dozen touches in that game. Um, he mm. didn't offer anything on the ball. He didn't offer anything off the ball, and he missed a sitter that w- would have me- meant West Ham walked away with a point. So for me, that's like that. That is really disappointing for me. And I really love him. I love what he's done for the club. But come on, like you- you're in that team and you're in that position to score goals, and you've missed the chance. So yeah, mm. Suchet for me. Yeah. Finally, what would you rate Julian Lopetegui out of ten for that yesterday? Uh, so to preface this. I agree with you on half time. He should have made changes at half time. Um, I agree with you in the sense that he probably should have started at least one Bissaka. Um, but I cut him a little bit of slack in terms of the fact that, like I say, he's probably not trained with us. There's probably some fitness issues with some of the new starters. I'm going to say five. Um, I cut him a little bit of slack. And I, I also appreciate the fact that. He didn't just sit there at two one and go, let's not lose three or four. He went, we could lose this three or four, but I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice and I'm gonna try and make something happen here. And he wasn't scared to do that. He was too late on the subs. You could have argued about the starting lineup. So I'd say probably a five out of ten. Mm. Um before we go, Jay, mm. how do we sort of uh, go forward from here in regards of it? Because obviously Palace is next, big game, Selhose Park. We've conceded five there twice mm. over the last few years. Um what what changes need to be put in as soon as possible? I think as a minimum, wan has to start next game. Um, like as an absolute minimum. You can argue maybe Fulkrug. And, and I saw some, uh, an interesting quote from Fulkrug where, and you've probably seen the same where he was talking about the fact he's come off the Euros. He's not had much of a preseason. Um, he's not trained with the boys very often. So I think we might see Antonio start again. Whether you agree with that or not is up to you. Um, but for me, you at least have to start wan I, again, I would happily throw Tadebo in there. I thought he looked lively. He wanted the ball. He wanted to make things happen. But I also wasn't that... I wasn't overly disappointed with Mavropanos. So, um, minimum start wan Um I don't want to see Suchek start in that in that 10 role again. He offered nothing. So, we need to figure out what we're going to do with that. I know mm. Alvarez probably isn't going to be fit, but there's got to be somebody else you could put in that 10. Like, for me... I'd be happier with Ward Prowse starting ahead of him if you want to try something a bit more solid. Because to mm. your point, we've held a few goals there. We can see a lot of goals generally. So for me, Wambasaka comes in for Sufal. For me, Ward Prowse comes in for Suchek. And if he's fit, Fulcrook comes in for Antonio. And then mm. I give us I give us a chance of getting something against Palace. Um I think Antonio, yes, he was terrible. And if Fulcrook's mm. not ready, I'll I'll chuck Bowen up front. I'll yeah. go Bowen up, I'll go Bowen up front. Kudus on the right, some of you on the left, and Lucas Paquette as the 10. And like maybe as in central midfield, you could go with Suchek and uh, Rodriguez, even though it's not right, but we ain't, we ain't got no choice. Or you go with Warfrass and uh, Rodriguez. Now, it's like personal preference. But mm. for me, Antonio yesterday, I looked at him and he just, he's just not the guy. He's just not the guy. Like his time is done at West Ham, in my honest opinion. And I think when you're starting him, and if four Krug's not fully match fit, then you need to change tack. And I think the front four of uh, Boeing, Kudus, Paqueta and Somerville, get Somerville in there because he's a left-hand side attacker. Mm. Um, and they are going to come forward against us, Palace. So can't attack. It wouldn't be a bad option for West Ham. Um, that's what I'll go with. I'll, mm. I'll go with like if four Krug is just not, if he's not fully matched there, but, if, if he is, then Borku comes in and obviously some of you goes out. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, Jay, any final words before we go, mate? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, the pain of the defeat is like still there. It's a little bit less sharp than it was straight after the game. Um, it will fade into 
we lost against the good Villa sides. I thought Villa were really good on the counter attack. To yeah. give a, a quick word to them, I thought they were good. I thought we dealt with them really well in the second half, and it had to be John Duran, didn't it? Like it was written in the stars that he was going to come on and score. It's the most West Ham thing that there's ever been. I think we all knew the second he came on that he was going to bury one. Like like it, it would it just it it just made sense, didn't it? So um, I'm as frustrated as everyone else. Uh, I have said before. I don't expect anything from the first three, but I want to see signs. So if we don't win against Palace, but we do the right things, i.e. the right players are starting, the right substitutions are made, and we're making progress, then we're still moving in the right direction. It will still hurt if we don't get anything against Palace, but if we make the right kind of changes to the starting lineup, I still give us a good chance. I'm still not going to panic, and I'll still be interested to sit when it comes to international break and look back over the first three games and see what signs of progress we can see. So... Not panicking yet. Let's move on to Palace and let's hope that we can get a result. Yeah, fair play, mate. Uh, smash a like on the video. It goes a long way. Subscribe to each on his own TV. Hit notification bell. That has been Jay's fan reaction to West Ham 1, Aston Villa 2. That is just a painful scoreline. That I'm gonna have, It's going to take me a little while to get over that one. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow uh, for more content on West Ham. Hopefully we, we're going to sign some players and... Look towards the Palace game. But from me to you, take care of yourselves. Jay's going to enjoy Africa and I'm going to enjoy East London. Take care. Peace. Hyper, 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 hyper.